Shido is a rizzless, miserable loser who can barely look a girl in the eye until he's forced to date spirit baddies and save the world. Thirty years ago, some overpowered magic girls suddenly attacked Earth and caused major disasters all over the world, isekaiing millions of people. After a while, the magic girls went on a commercial break, giving the world peace, until recently, when they started to attack again and to save the world. Shido is forced to learn the art of Riz so he can win their hearts over. One morning, as Shido and his sister eat their breakfast, he asks her what she would love for lunch, and she tells him she wants a treat at a low-class restaurant in the school. After getting to the restaurant, she tells him they should meet up there after they get out of school today, no matter what happens, even if a space quake were to take place. Meanwhile, three ugly bitches see them from afar and wonder if the two siblings grew up in Alabama, as they seem to have a thing for each other. What did he say? After Kotori leaves, an idiot named Tanamachi grabs him and, later in class, as they talk, a white-haired girl interrupts them by calling Shido's name, leaving him wondering who the heck she is. She sits beside him, and Shido asks his idiotic friend who she is, surprising Tanamachi that he doesn't know Tobichi, the super genius. Tobichi would keep staring at him later during the class, making him quite uncomfortable as he wonders if she just wants to get in his pants. A couple of hours later, the bell goes off, and Tanamachi comes to tell Shido that they should go home together, but he replies that he's got other plans. While Tanamachi thinks it's a girl, he tells him it's his little sister, making Tanamachi tell him he wasn't expecting otherwise since his face is too horrible to bag any girl. Suddenly, an alarm goes off, alerting the whole city about an impending spacequake. So everyone starts to run to shelter as the city's inbuilt tech evacuates everyone. Shido wonders where his sister is and hopes she is not dumb enough to stay at the restaurant waiting for him. He tries calling her, but it doesn't go through, and when he checks the GPS to locate her, he realizes she really is dumb after all. He immediately hits the street and starts running toward the restaurant, but on his way, a spacequake suddenly erupts, throwing him off. He soon sees a pretty girl dressed in an outfit you only find in animes, standing far off amid the quake, and he wonders what the heck she is doing there. The girl suddenly grabs her weapon and causes a large quake behind him, scaring him, and then points her weapon at him, threatening to Isakai because she thinks he has come to unal of her. He quickly tells her he isn't planning to do that since he can't even Isakai to fly, and then some girl fighters come attacking with missiles, and the strange girl blocks all the attacks with her force barrier. She immediately charges at them too, unleashing massive power which surprises Shido. After some exchanges, Shido realizes it's Tobiichi fighting with her and wonders what the heck is going on. The fight continues, and the two girls soon hit their weapons against each other, releasing massive energy into the environment that snaps Shido out. He wakes up in a facility and sees a depressed, miserable lady named Raid Ni checking him out. She introduces herself as the analysis officer, and he asks her where he is, to which she replies that he is in Frax in a sickbay, as he was brought here unconscious, but that only makes him more confused. He immediately asks about his sister, and Ray Need tells him not to worry about her. She then takes him out to meet someone who would answer his questions, only for him to realize that the said person is his little sister, shocking him. She welcomes him to her command center, the Ratatoskar, and starts acting all bossy, making him wonder if this is really his little sister. She explains that the strange lady in anime costume was a spirit from an outside world, and they usually blow up the area whenever they appear on Earth which is the phenomenon they know as spacequakes, shocking him. She further explains the group of fighters attacking her was the AST, which is the anti-spirit team in Japan responsible for managing the situation and basically slaughtering the spirits, making Shido immediately realize this must have been why she thought he wanted to isekai her too. Finally, she tells him that there is another way of handling the situation, different from the AST, and this is where he will be needed, shocking him. She tells him he will begin training the next day, and he just wonders what the heck he is about to get into. She then asks him why he was outside during the emergency, and he tells her it was because he was looking for her useless ass, but she calls him a fool for believing what she told him. He immediately tells her the GPS said she was at the restaurant, and she reveals that the airship Fraxinus is directly 15,000 meters above the restaurant, making him more shocked. The following day, Shido is called into a private room and he is introduced to the gaming software resembling Sim, which is supposed to help him train for his upcoming mission. Kotori grabs the joystick and shows him what the game is all about. Following this, he meets Tobiichi to ask about what happened earlier, and she tells him to forget about it. She then tells him she has the mission to be Sakai All Spirits, 
prompting him to ask if they are all bad, and she tells him she lost her parents five years ago because of a spirit, shocking him. Afterward, Kotori and Reini start to train Shido, and he is told that they are teaching him how to smooth-talk spirits to fall in love with him. So they ask him to try his pick-up lines on humans first to know how effective or useless they are. He is asked to raise up his homeroom teacher, who has been pure for 29 years, and he can only make up shitty pick-up lines with his underdeveloped brain. However, Reini decides to come to his aid and helps him with some lines, which makes the homeroom teacher climax instantly, but he quickly runs off before he runs into trouble. However, he runs into one when he accidentally bumps into Tobiichi, causing her to fall, thus revealing her plot armor is white. Kotori tells him to make her weak in the knees, but his useless brain can only come up with crap, disappointing her. Reine helps him again, and he eventually asks her out on a date, even though he doesn't mean it. Tobiichi expresses her feelings for him too, and he is surprised she agrees to go out with him, so as he tries to tell her it was a prank, an alarm suddenly rings, alerting everyone of an impending spacequake. Tobichi quickly leaves and goes to kit up in her uniform, preparing to go and bring down the damn spirit. The spirit from the previous day appears again and stays inside a classroom, refusing to come out, which makes it impossible for the AST to attack. So Kotori tells Shido he is the only one who can handle the situation and save her. She also tells him not to worry about what to say as the Fraxinus experts would give him directives. He heads inside the building and upon entering the class, dude is welcomed with a laser attack which would have Isek hide him if he didn't manage to dodge. He quickly tells her to calm down, and she asks him who he is. The committee of experts helps him select the best response to give her, but she gets vexed and almost deletes him from existence. She then approaches him and prepares to send him to Nirvana with her powerful magic ball from her hand. She asks him why he wants her dead, but he quickly tells her he is a student and has no intention of harming her. She soon realizes he is the idiot she met at the field the previous time. So she stops aiming her attack at him and asks what the heck he wants. He tells her he came to talk with her, and even if she ignores him, he will not reject her. Upon hearing this, she immediately becomes shy and tells him he is the first human who has made any attempt to talk to her. He asks for her name, to which she replies that she doesn't have one and tells him to give her a name of his choice. He names her Toka, which means 10th, because he first met her on the 10th of that month, and she likes it. The AST, who had been patient for a while, immediately start to fire at her, but she creates a barrier that blocks all the bullets, and then she tells Shido to leave so he won't be shot. However, he refuses and tells her he is staying right there to talk with her, so she sits with him while holding a barrier above them, protecting them from the ongoing massive fire. As they talk, Kotori tells him to make his move, and as he replies to her, Toka wonders who he is talking to, so she threatens to blast him, thinking he is planning against her. He suddenly asks her out on a date, following Kotori's instructions, but Toka doesn't know what the heck a date means. After a while, Tobiichi sees Shido and launches at them immediately, thinking Toka is holding him hostage. Toka suddenly activates a powerful weapon called Sand Dolphin and unleashes a strike that sends the whole place crashing down. Tobiichi is later carried off injured, and the next day, while Shido looks at the ruins of the building, Toka appears behind him surprising him that there was no spacequake alert. She tells him she came because he called her out on a date. However, Shido tells her she can't wear her astral dress for a date, and he shows her a picture of Tobiichi in her school uniform, so Toka magically transforms her suit into the school uniform. As they begin their date, wandering around the city, Toka starts eating everything called food on her way. While she eats his meat, she sees some white cream and becomes excited, telling him she wants that too. Meanwhile, Tobiichi is spying on them, and she wonders why there was no spacequake when Toka appeared this time. Shido asks her where she went after she disappeared the previous day, and she reveals that any time she disappears like that, she goes to a very dark world to sleep. He asks her if she comes to this world whenever she wakes, but she replies that she would instead regard it as being forced out of her sleep because she is drawn to the human world at irregular intervals, and she can't do anything about it. Shido realizes that this means the spacequakes aren't the spirits doing, but just unintentional accidents. He then asks why it didn't happen today when she appeared, but she refuses to tell him and says she wants another meat in her throat. But dude is already broke. They soon reach a restaurant, and while Shido tries to dissuade her from going in because he's got no more money, she insists on checking out what's there. However, Tanamuchi saves his broke ass when he suddenly appears and gives him some cash. Upon entering the restaurant, he is surprised to see Reini and asks why she is here. So she replies that they discovered and entered this world. 
As he sits with Toka, Toka slipped under the radar, checking the menu. Kotori suddenly appears too, shocking him, and she then suggests Toka order a special overkill course. Toka soon starts eating like a glutton again, and when Shido asks Kotori what this is all about, she tells him she is only increasing the odds of Toka, falling in love with him, since he's got a face only a mother can love. As Katori later leaves, she tells Shido to head south of the station when they are done here. Following this, Shido does just as Kotori told him, and on their way, the whole residential area transforms into a park to make their date more fun so he can eventually get laid for the first time in his pathetic life. As the date continues, with Toka putting every meat she sees in her mouth, Tobiichi is still spying, and she soon changes into her mech suit, preparing to attack Toka. Later that evening, Toka is excited about the fun she had during the date and tells him how nice she has realized humans are, unlike when she used to think all humans want her dead. She then tells him that she now understands why the Mecha team is after her, because she destroys something so beautiful anytime she comes into this world. She starts feeling rejected, saying maybe she ought not to be in this world, but Shido convinces her that there was no space quake when she came this time. However, she replies that that was just a lucky one as who knows what might happen the next time she comes. Then, Shido tells her to stay in this world and never leave, promising to teach her all she needs to know about this world. She says the Mecha team and others won't want such a dangerous person to live among them, but he tells her he will accept her no matter how much they reject her, surprising her and asks her to hold his hand. As she tries to hold him, Tobiichi, who has been aiming a sniper at Toka, immediately fires a shot, but she misses her target and hits Shido instead, knocking him dead instantly. Tobichi becomes terrified that she just shot Shido, and upon seeing this, Toka immediately summons her astral suit and sand dolphin, and unleashes a massive attack at Tobiichi. The space wick alarm goes off, and the guys at Fraxinus worry about the people in the city who are yet to be evacuated. However, Kotori is only concerned about Toka, and her subordinates ask her about Shido, but she tells them to continue working as Shido isn't going down that easily. Suddenly, Shido's bullet wound starts to glow, and he immediately comes back to life, surprising everyone and Kotori tells them to retrieve him instantly. Meanwhile, Toka is steaming very hot as she unleashes massive energy waves at Tobiichi, intending to isekai her, and Tobiichi feels terrible too that she is in no way different than a spirit which isekai her parents five years ago. Toka prepares to deal the final blow as Tobiichi confesses her sins and says her final prayers, but Shido suddenly starts to fall from the sky. Upon seeing him, Toka quickly catches him and hugs him. Her weapon goes berser due to an overcharge from her anger the other time. While they wonder what to do to prevent it from destroying the city, Kotori tells Shido to kiss her, which he does immediately, instantly removing all her plot armor as they return to the ground. She then asks him if he will take her on another date, and he agrees even though his ass is already dead broke. A couple of days later, when Shido returns from school, trying to avoid the rain, he wonders why the weather forecast has been very wrong recently, as it was speculated that it wouldn't rain. He sees a young girl named Ushino, who falls while playing in the rain, and as he tries to care for her, she quickly maintains social distancing and begs him not to hurt her, surprising him. The following day when he returns from school, wondering why it is raining again, even though the forecast states otherwise, he stops where he met Yoshino the previous day. After thinking about her and her little puppet for a moment, he runs home. On getting home, he pulls off his plot armor and goes to the bathroom immediately, only to see an uncensored view of Toka's plot. He heads over to meet Kotori to ask her what the heck Toka is doing in their house, and she tells him she has decided that she will be staying with them. She further explains that after he kissed her, he sealed her spirit powers, which created an invisible link between the two of them. He asks why he can do this, but Kotori tells him she doesn't know as they only found out through an analysis at Raditoskar. Ridney then adds that whenever Toka's mental state becomes unstable, there's a chance that the powers sealed inside of him will return to her, and since she seems to be more at ease whenever she is by his side. It's best she stays here until a specially dedicated home for spirits is built. Kotori also adds that it is an avenue for him to learn how to bag more girls, making him wonder why he needs any more training after he has already sealed Toka's powers. But Kotori tells him that there are many other spirits out there that need his spit, surprising him. Following this, Kotori sets many traps for him so he can be naughty with Toka, all in the name of training, but Toka only gets embarrassed and smacks him each time for being a loser. The next day, while Toka and Tobiichi fight over Shido as they usually do, a space quick alarm suddenly goes off. As everyone evacuates the building to safety, Tobiichi quickly heads to kit up for battle. Meanwhile, Reini tells Shido they have to leave Toka behind, since she is now pretty useless since her power has been sealed, and they shouldn't expose her to battles between spirits and AST, 
He hands Toka to the homeroom teacher and heads to Fraxinus immediately to analyze the situation. He soon discovers that the spirit being attacked is the same girl he saw some days back when returning from school. He immediately decides he's gonna save her, and they prepare him for the mission right away. Later, he enters the building where Yoshino has managed to hide from the attacks of the AST. She soon reveals herself, but doesn't talk as her little puppet is doing all the talking for her, making him wonder why she is allowing the little useless puppet to do this. However, the Ratatouskirk immediately warns him that her mood is rapidly sinking and tells him to get her in the mood quickly. So he asks her out on a date, but the gullible idiot thinks he is talking about the calendar. Meanwhile, Toka learns that it's dangerous outside while talking to some idiots who can't keep their mouths shut, and she immediately heads out in search of Shido. Yoshino stands on a high structure practicing acrobatics, and while Shido tries to convince her to come down, she slips and falls on him, kissing him in the process. Toka, standing not so far away, gets angry and asks Shido if this was what he came to do here, making him speechless as he was caught in the act. Meanwhile, Kotori informs Shido that Toka's powers have now returned to her. She gets angrier and rants on and on like a nagging housewife. The puppets start trash-talking her too, saying she is a nuisance and Shido must be tired of her already, which is why he came to see another girl. Toka gets angry and grabs the puppet by the neck, intending to shut its loose mouth permanently. Yoshino moves closer to Toka and tries to take back her puppet, but she doesn't give her, asking Shido to choose between her and Yoshino. Kotori immediately informs Shido that Yoshino's mental state is dwindling. Shido tells Toka to return the puppet, but this only makes her feel he likes Yoshino above her. Suddenly, Yoshino summons Zadgil, a terrible beast that controls Frost, and it starts to attack them. But Shido manages to save Toka. Yoshino jumps out of the building on Zadgil and runs off as the AST fires several attacks at her, but she manages to escape. Back at the building, Shido tries to touch Toka, but she refuses as she thinks that he prefers Yoshino. Following this, Toka continues to feel terrible and won't talk with Shido, and Raidney decides to visit her to give her a therapy session and find out what's wrong. Meanwhile, Kotori and One Creep analyze what happened between Shido and Yoshino back at the building, and they wonder why Yoshino's power wasn't sealed even though they both kissed. At the same time, Shido is wandering in the streets in the rain, and he sees Yoshino looking for her puppet, which she lost while trying to escape from the AST. So he decides to be a nice guy since he's trying to get in her pants anyway. Still in the therapy session, Raidney tells Toka that the kiss between Shido and Yoshino was a mistake and says Shido cares so much about her, which is why he could put himself in danger just to save her back there. While Shido looks for the puppet with Yashinan, her stomach suddenly growls, and he decides to take her home to give her some food. And after she is done eating, he asks her why she doesn't fight back when the AST attacks her. She replies that she doesn't like being hurt in scary things, just like AST. However, whenever it gets painful and she becomes scared, she goes crazy and ends up doing bad things to everyone. She then says this is why her puppet is her hero, because it always calms her down whenever she is agitated and is about to lose it. Shido rubs her head and promises to help her find her puppet, but then he adds that she won't need her puppet to protect her anymore because he will be her hero, surprising her. He immediately feels embarrassed and apologizes for kissing her the other time, but she doesn't know what kissing means, so he decides to show her again. However, as he is about to kiss her, Toka suddenly barges in, intending to apologize for snubbing him, but she sees them in this sus position, making her angry again. She heads back home to pass the aggression on her innocent pillow. Shido receives intel that Yoshino's puppet has been found, but it's in Topiichi's residence, so he heads there immediately to pay a surprise visit. She welcomes him in, gives him some horrible-looking tea, and soon leaves for the bathroom. During this time, Shido quickly searches her house like a thief until he finds the puppet and returns to where he was seated. Tabichi returns from the bathroom looking sus and sits down beside Shido, whose magnum has been disturbed from sleep, but he manages to ask her about her hatred for spirits. He tries to convince her that not all spirits are evil, using Toka and Yoshino as examples, but Tabichi ain't buying his bullshit and says she will isekai all spirits because a spirit took her parents from her five years ago. Shido tells her that Toka's powers have been sealed so she won't cause any more disaster, but Tobiichi tells him they don't know what might happen any time. However, he tells her he wants her to accept them and not isekai them since she is a nice girl. Tobiichi's phone suddenly rings, signaling an impending spacequake, and she quickly stands up to leave. But as she leaves, Shido asks her if she wouldn't attack a spirit that has lost her powers, and she replies that even though she would like to, it is left to her superior's commands. Meanwhile, the AST start to attack Yoshino as she tries to escape, and they manage to knock her to the ground. As they attempt to finish her off, she suddenly summons Zadkiel, which starts to counterattack as the AST continue to fire at her. As Yoshino escapes, Toka sees her and heads to the scene immediately. Meanwhile, Shudo calls Yoshino from afar, stopping her. 
but as he attempts to bring out her puppet, Tobiichi fires a powerful laser gun into Ashino, which causes Zadkiel to start charging up to attack immediately, not minding that Shido is there. Toka sees this and realizes that Shido is in danger, so she quickly tries to summon Sandolphin, but she struggles to do so since her powers are sealed. Zadkiel fires a massive attack from its mouth, but Toka manages to save Shido by eventually activating Sandolphin, which deflects the attack. Toka goes to meet Shido and apologizes for being so naughty, while the AST unleashes several attacks on Yoshino. Shido tells Toka he needs her help to save Yoshino, but Toka only thinks he likes her more, however. Shido explains that Yoshino is a spirit like her, and he had promised her he would save her, making Toka realize that it's the same thing Shido did for her too. She immediately pushes Sandolphin to the ground and tells Shido to use this to get to Yoshino. Meanwhile, the AST can't continue attacking due to the powerful force barrier Zadkiel has created as they would be struck with millions of ice if they move any closer. Tomichi immediately creates a huge force field and uses it to lift a building, intending to attack Yoshino with it, but Toka suddenly appears and splits it into two. On seeing her, Toka immediately charges at her and the others also switch their target to her. With their attention diverted, Shido heads into the force barrier created by Zadkiel, despite his sister telling him he could be freeze to death, and he manages to get through successfully, though exhausted. On seeing him, Yoshino heals his wound and he gives her her puppet, making her excited. He then tells her he needs to kiss her to save her, feeling embarrassed. And while the idiot won't stop talking, Yoshino shuts his mouth with her lips, immediately vaporizing her clothes as the sky restores to normal. Afterward, Kotori tells Shido Toko will no longer be staying with him as she unveils the new house built to accommodate spirits. One morning, Toka and Yoshino tell Shido they will like to visit a hot spring after seeing a TV ad about it, and he relays the message to Kotori, who has no choice but to grant the request since they don't want the spirits to go crazy. Meanwhile, at the AST base, the captain of the Mech team and her subordinates agreed to also visit the spring to have some same gender time together. But Tobiichi objects, saying they're ugly should rather be training. However, she receives a call from Shido who requests permission to hold the book she gave him for two more days, because he has something important to attend to. Tobiichi suddenly hears Toka's voice in the background and she becomes pissed, crushing the innocent little kin in her hand. Shido, Reine, and the two other girls soon get on their way to the spring, but Toka soon destroys the car out of jealousy, seeing how Shido is acting toward Yoshino. Meanwhile, the Mech team also hopped on an underground train and started heading for the same spring, but masking it as them going to assess the terrain so their superiors won't rebuke them for it. However, their train soon breaks down and they have to continue their journey on foot. Shido and his chicks are also proceeding on foot anyway since Angry Bird has successfully grounded their car. Toka feels terrible for causing the inconvenience but Shido, trying to act like the cool guy he is not, tells her he is not mad at her. Soon, the group of idiots at Fraxinus detect that the AST are coming toward the spirits, and not knowing that the AST didn't come for war, one of the idiots orders that they hinder them from moving forward. So the Fraxinus start to create several barricades around the location to delay the mech team, making them wonder what the heck is going on. The Ratted Tosker team start to launch different unharmful attacks, making them realize an enemy is trying to stop them, so they begin to counterattack too, causing a massive wreckage to the surrounding environment. Meanwhile, as Shido and the girls continue their sojourn, a bomb suddenly explodes right above their heads, causing them to hug the ground with Yoshino losing her puppet in the process. She starts to cry like a baby immediately and everywhere starts to freeze as it suddenly starts to rain, but Shido pets her, promising to retrieve it for her ASAP, and the rain stops. He heads out on his ultimate search while the AST and the Ratatosker continue having a beef with each other, and after running through the explosions for a while, he sees the puppet. However, as he dusts the dirt off it, a terrible explosion comes flying at him from above, but just before it hits him, Toka creates a barrier that shields both of them. On seeing Toka in her astral dress, the AST immediately consider attacking, but before to be Chi can make any move, Toka disappears with Shido, surprising them. Afterward, Kotori takes Shido and the girls to a low-budget hot spring her stupid assistant managed to discover while serving a punishment, and the AST team also head to the hot spring as they initially planned. Moreover, Tobiichi starts to look for Shido since she decided to come because of him, but she doesn't find him anywhere. Following this, Takamiya is introduced to the AST team as the girl who has once eased Sekai spirit, surprising everyone on the team. She sits beside Tobiichi as the captain shows them their previous fight with Yoshino. Tobiichi asks her about the spirit she isekai, and she replies that the spirit is different from the conventional ones they fought, which is why she was transferred to this unit. While she talks, she suddenly sees Shido on the screen and recognizes him, surprising Tobiichi. After the meeting, Tobiichi tells Takamiya that Shido never talked about having another younger sister, prompting Takamiya to ask if she knows him, and Tobiichi replies that they are lovers, shocking her. Following this, a new student, Kurumi, transfers to the school, and as she is introduced, she reveals that she is a spirit, 
surprising everyone. She then requests that someone will show her around the school after school since she is new. One brat raises his hand, but she stumps his ass and heads over to Shido's seat to tell him she is the one she wants. Meanwhile, the AS2 realize the girl is really a spirit and wonder why she transferred to the school. Takamiya tells them Kurumi is no ordinary spirit as she has isekai over 10,000 people with her own hands besides the deaths caused by her space wakes, and they are surprised. After school, Shido and Kurumi meet as planned, while Toka and Tobichi spy on them out of jealous, as they wonder what the new girl is up to with her crush. Shido, following the guidance of the idiots at Fraxinus, mistakenly asks for the color of her plot armor, and while he thinks she might get mad, the girl is a baddie and tries opening her floodgate for him, but he quickly stops her and asks her what she meant when she called herself a spirit. However, she tells him not to play dumb, surprising him, and he asks her how she knows about him, but she refuses to tell him. She instead tells him that she has had feelings for him ever since she found out about him. She soon grabs his hand and Shido is feeling sus, but the two stupid spies suddenly fall out of their hiding, exposing themselves. A few moments later, while they part, Kurumi whispers in Shido's ears that she will ride his dragon next time they are together alone, and as she leaves, Shido can only thank his god that Toka and Tobiichi came just in time, cause who knows what she would have done to his little sausage. On Kurumi's way, she is crossed by some bullies who want to clap her, so she agrees to the group plot and deceives them away to a corner where she literally eats them up. Takamiya arrives just in time and prepares to fight her. Five seconds later, Takamiya meets Shido as he goes home with his two side chicks, and she hugs him in excitement, calling him brother. But dude wonders who the heck is this b She follows him home feeling so excited that her brother is alive, but Kotori gets jealous and gets in a fight with her over who is real and who is fake. Later, Shido asks her where she has been, and she replies that she is working but refuses to tell him where she works and hurriedly leaves, making them wonder what she is hiding. The next day, while the homeroom teacher takes the class attendance, they discover that Kurumi is not in class, making them wonder why a new student will be defaulting from the second day of school. Tobichi says she won't be coming again, but she suddenly appears in class, shocking her. During the class, Shido receives a message from Kotori asking him to come to the physics lab during lunch. Abito later meets Kotori and Rene, who show him the footage of what happened with Kurumi the previous day. Takamiya along with the AST, attack her and brutally isekai her. However, she came to school today, leaving them confused about what she really is. Meanwhile, Tobiichi meets Kurumi in the changing room and asks her why she is still alive even though they isekai'd her yesterday. Kurumi immediately restrains her with some eerie hands that suddenly grow out from the floor. She then tells Tobiichi that they are only making futile efforts, prompting her to ask what she is after. Then, Kurumi reveals she enrolled in the school because she wants Shido and all his powers. Later after school, Shido approaches Kurumi to ask her on a date with him because Katori had instructed him to do so, so they can get more info about her, and she delightedly agrees. After she leaves, Tobiichi appears and asks what he was discussing with the devil, but he quickly avoids her and leaves. Meanwhile, Tobiichi thinks about all Kurumi did and said to her, and she becomes worried about him. Upon returning home, Toka dances in a sus way before Shido until he takes the ticket in between her balloons and discovers that she has fixed a date with him the next day. While he is surprised by this, Tobiichi also calls him, asking him to meet her the next day too, shocking him. The next day, he has to meet the three girls without any of them, finding out he is seeing the other two, and the Ratatosker promised to assist him in meeting the demands of the three girls without fail. He starts off with Toka, and after spending some time with her in the aquarium, he pretends to have stomach upset, so he can excuse himself to the toilet. But he immediately heads over to Kurumi, who takes him to the lingerie shop to buy some sus clothes. While at the shop, some of his classmates see him, and as they attempt to come over to accuse him of cheating, he quickly pretends to have a stomach upset again and runs over to meet Tobiichi in a different location. They both then sit at the restaurant to eat. He asks Tobiichi why she wanted to meet him, and she tells him she doesn't want him to be alone, and adds that he has to go home with her after the date where he will be staying for a while, surprising him. As they begin to eat, he suddenly sees Toka running across, causing him to choke immediately, so he quickly excuses himself and goes to meet her. He continues to go around in circles among the three, even though he is exhausted from running around. At the same time, he tries to escape from his classmates who saw him earlier, but Yoshino managed to distract them. After a while, Shido sits alone by a forest and notices some messed up dudes testing their guns on a cat, so she heads there to make it more amusing for them. Meanwhile, the Ratatosker lose track of her as the surveillance system suddenly cuts off, shocking them. Tobichi and Toka bump into each other and are surprised to see themselves. They soon realize that Shido is a Casanova and Tobichi, thinking he must have brought a third girl, which is why he is currently not with them, immediately runs off to look for him. As Shido returns to where he left Kurumi, 
and doesn't find her. He wonders where she is and Kotori informs him that they lost her. They instantly receive an alert warning of a massive spirit wave coming from the woods, and Shido immediately heads into the forest in search of her. However, he becomes terrified when he sees the whole place soiled in blood and a man's foot left on the ground. He sees Kurumi brutally shooting a man with a wicked smile on her face and a pre-installed Hublot watch in her left eye. He quickly tries to escape, but Kurumi captures him with her horrible hands and approaches him. She grabs him and licks her lips as she plans to start eating lunch. However, Takemiya suddenly appears to save him, and then unleashes massive strikes with her special weapon that severely injures Kurumi before she could make any move. Shido is shocked and asks her how she is so calm about this, after Issei Kang someone and she replies that it's a spirit and Issei Kang them is what she does for a living. She further explains that Kurumi is a special kind of spirit, which no matter how they eliminate her, she keeps coming back to life. She adds that this is why she has to keep Issei Kang her, since Kurumi is fond of sending people to Nirvana. Dude still tries to defend her, but Takedima shuts his ass out with a barrier and approaches Kurumi, preparing to deal the final damage. Shido heads over to Frax and is feeling terrible, that he once thought all spirits are good, but that belief has changed since he met Kurumi. He then tells Kotori he wants to give up, but she smacks him on the cheek and tells him to stop being a coward as there is no quitting for him. Afterward, as he heads back home from school, Toka meets him and drags him away to have some fun time with her, and later that evening, Shido tells her how he needs to stop Kurumi from isekaying more people, but he doesn't know how to talk to her since she seems really different from her and Yoshino. However, Toka tells him that Kurumi is a spirit too, and is in no way different from them. She adds that if not for him, she could have also turned out like Kurumi, and the only difference between her and Kurumi is that someone extended a caring hand to her. This boosts Shido's confidence and the next day, he meets Kurumi to tell her he is going to save her and stop her from isekaying people. You would think she would be touched by his kind gesture, but she goes to the rooftop and causes more chaos instead, trying to test if he meant what he said. She stains the cameraman's lens with blood, affecting the school building, and all the students fall to the ground immediately. Meanwhile, Takemiya confronts Kotori for putting Shido in danger by sending him off to spirits alone unarmed. She then tells her she will take care of him from now on, but Kotori chuckles and tells her she is never going to entrust Shido to a corrupt company like the Duas. Ex Machina Industries, shocking Takemiya who wonders how she knows about them. Kotori tells her she knows she works for them and was transferred to the AST, further shocking her. However, Takemiya tells her she's indebted to the company and can never repay them, surprising Kotori who then reveals that they analyzed her saliva and found out that the company infused her body with excess amount of magic, which reduced her lifespan to 10 years, shocking Takamiya who wasn't aware. They both receive a call about the ongoing situation in the school and they immediately head out. Meanwhile, Shido sees Toka also writhing in pain and wonders why he is the only one not affected, and Reini tells him it's because Toka and Yoshino's powers are sealed within him. Kurumi calls him from the rooftop and tells him to come over if he has business with her, so he leaves immediately. Tobichi activates her mech suit and heads for the rooftop too, but she is crossed by one of Kurumi's clones. Toka, realizing that Shido might be in danger going alone, manages to unseal her powers, but she is suddenly attacked by another Kurumi. On the rooftop, Shido asks Kurumi what the heck she is doing, and she replies that it's the time-consuming castle, a barrier that sucks the time out of those who tread her shadow. Shido is shocked, and she further explains that the humblet watch in her left eye represents her lifespan, and every time she uses her magic, it drains a lot from it, so she replenishes it, occasionally using this method. She then tells Shido, he is the main reason she came here, as she desires to eat his meat in the traditional way. Hearing this, Shido tells her to lead the others out since he is the one she came for, but she tells him he has to take back the trash he said earlier about saving her, or something like that before she can. However, he pleads that she should remove the barrier, but he's not giving up on her, making her pissed. She then immediately induces a spacequake, which immediately triggers the spacequake alarm, shocking the guys at Fraxinus. However, Raidney informs Shido that Kurumi's mental state is changing, as though she is afraid of him, so he immediately climbs the railing and threatens to unalive himself since she really desires to eat him. She tells him to stop the cat, but Shido suddenly backdives from the building, shocking her so she quickly jumps after and saves him before he hugs the ground. He tells her he will chew his tongue if she doesn't clean the blood stain on the cameraman's lens, so she immediately clears at the snap of a finger. Shido then starts preaching the good news, making her change her mind and she attempts holding his hand to accept salvation. Another clone of Kurumi stabs her from behind, Isekaying her instantly. She then captures Shido with her horrific arms, and she attempts to touch him. Takemiya suddenly cuts off her arm, but she immediately summons a custom-made watch and a gun, which she uses to turn back time, 
restoring her arm. She shoots at Tekamiya, throwing her off, and then suddenly appears behind her to shoot her again. Toka and Tobichi arrives at the rooftop, but before they can make any move, Kurumi summons many of her Tan remnants. She tells Tekamiya, this is the reason she can never unalive her, because she has different versions of herself from different times. She restrains them and then activates another space quake, but Kotori suddenly appears and cancels it with an equally powerful force, shocking everyone to see her in an astral dress. She then summons her weapon and prepares to fight. They begin an intense battle, and after several exchanges, Kurumi suddenly stops time and summons all her clones to rain fire at her, before approaching her and putting the final bullet in her skull, knocking her to the ground. Kurumi mocks her, thinking she has won, but Kotori's wounds heals instantly, and she returns to her feet, shocking her. Kurumi quickly summons her clones to attack her, but she blows them up as they gather around her. Then, Kurumi shoots herself to unleash more power, instantly weakening Kotori as she prepares another attack. Kurumi, mocking her, prepares to shoot her, but Kotori suddenly summons a very powerful weapon and blasts Kurumi's clones off as they try to protect her, also destroying her clock. Kurumi falls to her knees, exhausted, and Kotori prepares another blast. Upon seeing this, Shido fears that she might die, and he tries cautioning Kotori, but when she doesn't listen, he quickly runs to block the blast. Kotori fires at her cannon and immediately realizes that Shido is there. Shido later wakes up in the hospital from a dream where he sees himself and Kotori in the midst of chaos. On seeing Reini, he starts to ask a lot of questions trying to know if everyone, and Reini suddenly puts his head on her soft pillows before telling him that everyone is fine, even though Kurumi managed to get away. Reini takes him to where Kotori is and upon meeting her, he asks if she is a spirit. She replies that she is human even though the data says she is a spirit, confusing him. She further explains that she was born a human but not until five years ago when she became a spirit. Or better put, she became a human with a spirit's power. Shido immediately remembers the dream he had of what happened in the past and he tells her about it, surprising her of how true that might be. He then asks her how she became a spurt, but she tells him she can hardly remember. Shido asks how the heck they forgot something so important and she suggests that someone must have wiped their memories. He then asks how she has managed to suppress her powers since then and she replies that he was the one who sealed them, surprising him. She adds that although no one knows why, he has the ability to seal spirits' powers, which is why the Ratatosker chose him to be the one to contact them. Shido asks again how come he's got healing powers and she tells him it's her powers, surprising him. She then calls him forward and punches him, telling him he would have died if not that she came back to herself, because whenever she regains her powers, she occasionally loses herself and has the strong urge to destroy things and isekai people. He asks if her powers will return to him, and she tells him no except he seals again like he did with Toka and Yoshino. Since she retrieved 100% of her powers, he has to date her and make her fall in love with him, surprising him. Kotori suddenly collapses and Reine comes to attend to her. Later, Reine tells him that Kotori can only hold her spiritual energy for two more days after which she will completely lose herself and will no longer be the Kotori he knows. So he has to have a date with her in two days where he will see their powers. Afterward, Shido visits Takamiya in the hospital but he isn't allowed to see her so he meets Toka instead and later, as he prepares to leave. She asks him about the spirit of flames that appeared while they fought Kurumi. He tells her he was knocked unconscious too, refusing to tell her. He then asks why she is concerned about her, and she replies that it was that spirit that burned her parents before her eyes five years ago. Since then she has been looking for her, so she decided to join the AST and started hunting spirits to avenge her parents. Following this, Shido prepares for his date with Kotori by wasting a lot of time with the other girls, and later that evening, he meets the vice commander of Ratatosker to tell him how clueless he is about how to seal Kotori's powers. The dude tells him he's got the footage of what happened on the Great Fire Day five years ago and asks if he would like to see. Maybe it'd be of help in finding out how he sealed Kotori's powers then. As Shido later checks the footage, he sees a strange figure besides himself and Kotori, that day and reasons that it must have been responsible for Kotori's powers. He racks his brain, trying to recall what happened, but it becomes overwhelming and he collapses. The next day, which is the day of the date, he meets Kotori and the date begins. He tries all the rise techniques he learned on the internet, but they get working, and he wonders what the heck he is going to do, because if he continues at this rate, he will never be able to save her. After a while, Kotori excuses herself and when she leaves, Shifo also leaves to talk to the guys at Fraxinus about some other lines he can deploy, and as he walks, he shockingly sees Reini attending to Kotori as she is currently feeling pains. He sneaks behind them to listen to what they are saying, and he discovers that Kotori has been using drugs to stabilize herself since she regained her powers, but she doesn't want him to know, so he doesn't date her out of pity. He returns to the beachside 
and when Kotori returns, he throws away the covered earpiece he is using in communicating with Fraxinus, since they are a bunch of idiots too anyway. He decides to unleash his inner god Tyrese and suggests they head to the amusement park. Meanwhile, Tobichi meets her superior who shows her the new equipment they just got. She asks if this can be used to defeat Efreet, the Spirit of Flames, making her superior wonder if Efreet was the spirit in the footage from five years ago. Tobichi is surprised and requests to see the video, only to discover that the Spirit of Flames she has always been after is Kotori. Meanwhile, Shido and Kotori spend some fun time together, and after a while they sit to talk, but she is so in the mood that she expects that he will kiss her. Meanwhile, a report reaches Tobichi's superior at AST that the new tech is missing along with some other ammunition, and she immediately recalls Tobiichi asking if the new equipment can defeat Ifrit, making her realize that she must have broken in to use them. Shido attempts asking Kotori about what happened five years ago, but someone suddenly blasts at her, terrifying him, and as he looks to find out who it is, he discovers it is Tobiichi. He asks her what the heck she was thinking, and she replies that she just isekai'd Kotori. However, Kotori suddenly reappears and calls her an idiot for thinking she could take her down so easily. Tobichi starts shooting heavily at her from her huge cannons, and Kotori quickly changes into her astral dress and summons her weapon. Then they begin to exchange attacks, affecting the surrounding area. Koka and Yoshino, who are on the other side of the amusement park, notice the turbulence and reason that Kotori and Shido must be facing a powerful enemy. So Toka attempts to go and help but Yoshino's puppet tries to convince her otherwise, since her spiritual powers are currently sealed. However, Toka says that as Shido is doing all his best to save Kotori, that she will also do everything she can to protect him. She leaves immediately in her astral suit, and seeing this, Yoshino decides to join her in protecting him too. As the battle continues, with Kotori blocking Tobiichi's powerful attacks by creating several barriers. She suddenly feels weak and realizes that she has used too much power. So Tobichi quickly uses this opportunity by capturing her with two glowing ropes from her cannons before unleashing another brutal attack, but Kotori manages to protect herself. She then charges at Tobichi and starts hitting her equipment until it becomes deactivated. At this moment, Kotori has already gone crazy and doesn't mind isekaying her, even though Shido is yelling at the top of his lungs that she stops. She summons her weapon again and attempts to erase her bloodline, but Tobiichi suddenly reveals that this was how she unlived her parents five years ago, shocking her. Kotori falls to the ground, and Tobiichi immediately charges up her weapon again and starts blasting at her which Kotori manages to block with a barrier. Shudo quickly intercepts them and tells Tobiichi to stop attacking, but she doesn't listen as she tells him she has lived solely for this purpose for the last five years. He suggests that she is only after the Spirit of Flames and not his sister, but Tobiichi is confused by the trash he is saying and replies that Kotori is the Spirit of Flames. She prepares to fire another attack, but Toka and Yoshino suddenly arrive and distract her, while Shido quickly takes Kotori away from the scene. As the two other girls combat Tobichi, Shido confesses his feelings for Kotori, making her embarrassed, and she does the same before he finally kisses her, sealing her powers immediately, thus healing his wounds. He then turns to Tobichi and tells her to isekai him, instead since she is after Ifrit and the spirit is now inside him and not his sister. He tells her that it was Ifrit who took her parents five years ago and not Kotori. Tobichi doesn't understand what he is talking about and he explains that someone else was responsible for what happened to Kotori. Tobichi soon maxes out her limit and as she tries shooting with a normal gun, she collapses from exhaustion. Meanwhile, Kurumi appears again on the other side of town. Back at Fraxinus, Rainey tells Shido that his date with Kotori didn't make any difference, surprising him since he thought he was supposed to raise Kotori's emotional levels before he could see her powers. However, Rainey tells him that Kotori's emotional levels have always been at the max toward him because she has feelings for him. Kotori becomes embarrassed and quickly knocks Shido off with a kick, saying the machine must be broken. After this, Kotori tells them that she finally remembers the spirit from five years ago, but since they can't yet rule out the possibility that someone wipes their memories, they need to store the information outside their heads. Kotori prepares to leave the scene and before she leaves, she asks Shido if what he said to her yesterday was true, and he confirms it was, just that he only loves her as a sister, pissing her off. After an eventful month, Shido wakes up to a huge explosion and wonders whose mom just waltzed inside his house. Concerned, he sprints Naruto-style and finds Toka bawling her eyes out, because she spilled juice all over his precious notes. She's convinced he's gonna hate her now, and with her emotions all over the place, she turns into a walking nuke. Not wanting his country to experience another kaboom moment, Shido uses his max chill approach and tries to calm her down. But then he hears Yoshino's screaming from the bathroom. He rushes in and sees the whole thing frozen solid in Yoshino's, they're wrapped in a towel. 
Pointing at the poor puppet that she'd accidentally drowned, he tells her to stop turning everything into Ice Age so he could take it out. As soon as he grabs it out of the tub, the whole house gets back to being less chaotic. Meanwhile, Tobiichi stands before the inquiry officer who is about to decide her fate. As he is about to punish her, the meeting is interrupted by a loser named Westcott, who appears to be a smug bastard just because he has white hair. Back at the Itsuka household, Toka and Yoshino eavesdrop on Shido and his sister Kotori, talking with each other. Kotori scolds Shido for sleeping all the time, but Shido brushes his sister off by saying he has actual school to attend. He then walks over to the counter to make some breakfast for his two girlfriends. On the other hand, two ugly girls with their plots spilling out of their shirts discuss Tobichi's suspension. They tell her that she is lucky they didn't toss her out of the regiment and wonder why someone from DM came to help an unpopular loner like herself and tell her to get some rest while they take care of the palace. As Shido is about to dig into his breakfast with his cuddle crew, he receives a text from Tobiichi saying that she is waiting for him outside his crib, ready for some deep meat grinding session. This prompts Shido to leave his breakfast as he goes to see her. However, before he could step out, Toka being a love-starved rat asks Shido to take her out, but Shido tells her to wait for him. Feeling disappointed, Yashino and Toka decide to watch their favorite TV show, where the husband is leaving the house, ending his relationship with his wife, much like your own parents. When Shido walks out, he sees Tobichi hiding behind a lamppost. He walks up to her, and she weirdly asks him why he called her here. He looks at her, wondering what the heck she smokes to act this weird. She tells him that they need to talk privately and takes him to the women's toilet. Now in the toilet, Shido practically screams when Tobichi lifts her skirt so he can dip his pinky in her stinky. However, seeing Shido's uncultured response, Tobichi says she wants to show him why they call her Soul Snatcher. Sighing, Shido tells her that he came out to talk to her about the events that transpired a month ago when she went batshit crazy and tried to kill his sister. Once Tobichi is on board with what's going on, Shido insists that Kotori is not the spirit that turned her into an orphan loser. After vouching for Kotori's innocence, Shido pleads with her to believe in him, much like your lying ex who was definitely cheating behind your back. Feeling threatened by Shido's screen time, Tobiichi cuts him off and says she believes in him so he can stop yapping now. Hearing this, Shido thanks her, but Tobiichi insists that she should be thanking him for not sending her ass to the electric chair since she tried to cancel Kotori's live subscription. As they're about to leave, Tobichi hits Shido with an unexpected question, asking if he's a human. Back at the Itsuka household, Toka, wanting to impress Shido, decides to get all wifey and starts cleaning his room. While she is about to start cleaning, she discovers a suitcase that resembles one she'd seen in her melodramatic drama serial on television. Connecting the drama with real life, Toka grows worried, and her anxiety levels rise, turning her into a destructive machine. As she runs to make sure Shido isn't leaving her bibbed ass, she comes across the female toilets and finds Shido with Tobichi. Seeing them together, Toka is convinced she is about to get dumped which causes her to fall on her knees. With pain laced in her voice, Toka asks Shido why is he picking a boring girl over her, who has multiple breakdowns in a day. Before he could answer, Toka runs off and Shido follows after her. Once he finds Toka who accuses him of liking Tobichi more, Kotori contacts him and informs him about Toka's fragile emotional state. Furthermore, Rin notices that Toka's emotional state is affecting the gradual return of her spirit powers. She speculates that the recurring restoration of Toka's powers might be linked to a weakening connection between them. Building on this, Kotori warns that if the connection fully disappears, another spacequake could occur. To prevent this, she instructs Shido to lift Toka's spirits. When Shido asks how, Kotori reminds him of their usual method, taking the spirits on dates and making them fall in love with him. With this in mind, Shido soon asks Toka on a date. However, when Toka is unable to eat her favorite bread, she becomes more unstable than a 90s housewife. Back at Fraxinus, Kanazuki returns with a handful of breads. Seeing this, Kotori orders him to hand some to Shido. With water under the bridge, a happy Toka returns home while munching on her bread. Later on, Shido packs his suitcase and takes it to meet with Tobiichi, as he had promised to help her get some supplies for the annual school trip. However, seeing Shido with a suitcase, Toka recalls how your dad left you and becomes more flustered. To ease her mind, she tails Shido and finds him at the station with Tobiichi. Believing he is about to leave her, 
Toka uses her spirit power to snatch away Shido's suitcase and runs off with it. With a space quake now inevitable, the city falls into panic while Shido pursues Toka. After finding her at the park, Shido reveals the whole story to her. However, since her powers are now out of bound, Toka accidentally ends up hurting Shido. Meanwhile, Rin informs the group that Toka has reached the danger zone and that the overflowing power will destroy the town and even Toka herself. Knowing the stakes, Kotori orders everyone to stand on as she believes in her brother's ability to be a Rizzler. Back at the playground, Shido musters all his might and places a kiss on Toka's lips, sealing her spirit powers again. Elsewhere, Westcott receives an update from his secretary, Ellen, informing him that she has detected the spirit known as Princess, the same spirit who vanished from Tengu City three months ago. Ellen's report reveals that Princess is now attending Raisin High School in Tengu City under the alias Toka Yedogami. Intrigued by this discovery, Westcott decides to investigate the situation further in their own way. As the students of Raisin High prepare to board the plane, they are all stunned to find Toka in the boys' uniform. Meanwhile, Shido looks like he's about to pass from the sheer craziness of the trip. He can't stop thinking about how her huge plots are spilling out of her shirt. On the other hand, Toka remains determined to stay close to her bow, despite her not-so-convincing disguise. The teacher tries to explain that just wearing boys' clothes won't make her grow a pork sword, but Tobichi jumps in, saying that Toka's dedication shows she has massive nuts. She argues that if Toka wants to switch genders to be with Shido, then Shido should switch to join the girls. Overwhelmed with so much attention, Shido jumps in and tells his teacher to cut it out or he'll call the Rainbow Army on her. In the end, the teacher compromises and lets Toka and Tobichi sit next to Shido on the plane. Meanwhile, at Fraxinus, Kotori gets informed by her staff that the travel agency covering the trip cost is owned by Dim Industries, raising suspicions that they might be planning something sus with this school trip. On the flight, Shido finds himself sandwiched between Toka and Tobichi, who are constantly bickering for his attention. Tobichi nudges Shido, asking him to look at the scenery. Toka, not to be outdone, throws a tantrum when Shido refuses to look at the airplane carpet she's desperately trying to show him. Amid the chaos, a mysterious woman with specks bigger than her face snaps a picture of Toka. Shido is puzzled, but Tobichi quickly explains that she's the photographer accompanying them for the trip leaving out the part where Ellen works for Dim Industries and is spying on Toka. Ellen, the photographer, tries to return to her seat, but two overly lonesome attention-seeking students interrupt her with random questions about her camera. Not wanting to deal with someone's crotch goblins, she walks away. At Ruby Island, Toka rushes toward the ocean and Shido follows her. While they chat, their teacher announces that the group will be visiting a museum. Shido tries to get Toka back to the group, but she stops, saying she senses someone spying on them and takes off. Ellen notices them running away and is about to follow, but I, May, and Mai appear out of nowhere and distract her with their sudden interest in her, grabbing her arms and dragging her away as she struggles to escape. Meanwhile, Shido and Toka sprint away from the group, only to be caught in a massive hurricane that seemingly appeared out of nowhere. Three trash cans crash into Toka, knocking her out cold. Shido attempts to carry her to safety but encounters two spirits locked in an intense battle, causing huge thunderclaps and chaos. Yuzuru, a spirit dressed in ribbons, barely covering her huge plots, and Kaguya, dressed similarly, argue about who the true Yamai is. Ignoring the storm around them, they continue bickering while Shido, confused, tries to intervene. The two spirits question Shido's interference in their sacred battle. When suddenly, Yuzuru has an epiphany and points out that after centuries of fighting, they've achieved nothing but equal wins, losses, and draws. She proposes a new way to settle their rivalry. Whoever wins Shido's heart will be declared the true Yamai. The challenge is set. Back with the school group, Tobichi grows worried when Shido doesn't return and prepares to go look for him. Just as she's about to leave, she sees him coming back with two new girls and an unconscious Toka. Tobichi's jealousy flares up upon noticing that both Yuzuru and Kaguya have bigger plots than her. Back at the school, their teacher Tama A makes space for the girls in Shido's class. Yuzuru and Kaguya quickly fixate on Shido, competing for his attention and begging him to choose between them. As Tama A tries to settle the twins into the class, they reveal that they were once a single spirit to Mai, and that their contests are an effort to decide whose personality will remain when they fuse back into one being. Shido, overwhelmed with the chaos of the two Hello Kitty girls, 
tries to relax and walks over to the pool area, but ends up in the water strip with both of them by the side, each trying her best to get his attention by pressing his arms to their almost wet bare bodies. Kagwa asks Yuzuru to go on and try seducing Shido first, but Yuzuru senses that Kaguya does not have any moves and she is only trying to play mind games and refuses to go first. They start their mindless bickering again, this time over who has bigger plots. Shido tries to stop them so that no one hears them inside, but then the door opens and Toka enters with her plots on full display and jumps in the pool. She then notices Shido and the girls, but Shido tells her that they tricked him into being here. As they are talking, the whole block of girls enter the pool, causing Shido to run while hiding his precious jewels with his hands. As he hides behind a rock, Toka follows him and tells him that she will cover for him, making it easy for him to leave the pool area. While Toka is trying to hide Shido, fate decides to be the B-word causing Shido to fall inside the icy water. Somewhere else, Ellen reports to the invisible airship and orders the deployment of a Bandersnatch unit, instructing them to remain on standby for further action. Both Kaguya and Yuzuru continue on with their fatherless attempts to seduce Shido by sneaking into his room at the resort. Shido, feeling utterly embarrassed, realizes why women are constantly pissed at the XI chromosome gang. Meanwhile, Toka and Tabichi argue over who will take care of Shido. Their bickering escalates until I and Mai and Mai suggest a better way to settle the dispute. As Toka and Tabichi head to the trio's room, Ellen orders three Bandersnatch units to be stationed outside. However, as Ellen opens the door to inspect the situation, a pillow unexpectedly smacks her in the face, exposing her presence to I, Mei, and Mi. Back in Shido's room, he finds his honor in the hands of the twins and begs them to stop treating him like a piece of meat. Outside, Taman A, noticing the late-night commotion, wonders why everyone is so lively. Hearing that Shido is sick, she knocks on his door to check on him. Unfortunately, at that very moment, a naked Shido tries to make his escape but ends up landing on Taman A, exposing his little friend to her. Above Aruby Island, James Paddington and his crew closely monitor the resort. When he receives no word from Ellen, he orders the immediate withdrawal of the three Bandersnatch units. The following day, Shido waits for the twins at the beach under Reen's guidance. As they discuss how to handle the situation, Shido considers letting the twins win him over, to which Reen agrees. This plan would involve the twins following her advice on how to gain his affection, giving her some control over their actions. Shido adds that this might create the opportunity to seal both of them. Though Reen cautions that due to their competitive nature, kissing one of them could provoke a negative reaction from the other. Still, Reen believes this might be their only chance and encourages Shido to proceed. Determined, Shido vows to do whatever it takes to save the twins. After Reen cuts off communication, Kaguya and Yuzuru arrive at the beach, and Shido compliments them on their swimsuits. The twins then ask Shido to rub sun and lotion on them which sparks another argument over whose skin is more appealing and which of them he prefers. While both of them continue to fight, Shido's pathetic mind breaks at the sight of so much skin. Their fight continues until Shido decides to solve the problem by rubbing lotion on both of them simultaneously. Meanwhile, Ellen keeps a close eye on Toka and instructs the Arbitel to track her movements. However, Ellen's surveillance is interrupted when she falls into a sandpit set up by I, Meg, and Mi, who mischievously bury her in the sand alongside Tanamachi, who tells Ellen to not hit on him since he's loyal to his e-girl. Later at the beach, Toka and Tobichi join Shido, Kaguya, and Yuzuru. Shido quickly notices the familiarity between the twins and the two girls. Kaguya explains that she has befriended Toka and made her her sensei, while Yuzuru sought advice from Tobichi and has decided to learn under her guidance. Tobichi curiously asks what they're doing at the beach, and as Shido fumbles to explain, Reen steps in, announcing that they are planning to play beach volleyball. In private, Shido asks Reen why she showed up so unexpectedly, and she explains that the plan had to change due to Toka and Tobichi's arrival. During the volleyball match, Reen partners Shido with the twins, giving them an opportunity to bond while playing together. Consequently, Reen teams up with Toka and Tobichi to face off against Shido and the twins in the volleyball match. Shido worries that neither Kaguya nor Yuzuru will be able to cooperate, and he's equally unsure about Toka and Tobichi's ability to work together. However, Rin assures him not to worry, revealing that she secretly told Toka and Tobichi that the winning team would know which hand Shido uses for his morning cardio.
During the match, the twins initially struggled to coordinate, giving Toka and Tabichi an early advantage. The two opponents even begin teasing Kaguya and Yuzuru for their inability to work as a team, which provokes the twins into cooperating more effectively. Their newfound teamwork leads them to score against Toka and Tobichi, prompting them to celebrate together, only to quickly resume their usual bickering afterward. Later, behind a small shed, Shido consults with Rin, asking if their plan is really going to work. Rin admits she's uncertain herself. Just then, Kaguya appears and shyly asks Shido if she can speak with him privately. Surprised, Shido asks Rin if this was part of her instructions, but Rin denies it. Noticing Kaguya's nervousness, Shido tries to reassure her, though Kaguya attempts to play it cool. However, she quickly loses her composure when Shido looks at her with concern, causing her to blush and fumble. Kaguya then gets to the heart of the matter and urges him to pick Yuzuru instead of her. Later, Yuzuru approaches Shido with a similar request, asking him to choose Kaguya over her. Unbeknownst to each other, both twins selflessly express their desire for the other to be chosen, as they simply want the other to live happily. Shido, however, tells them that whichever one is not chosen will disappear, and both Kaguya and Yuzuru confirm this. When Shido asks for an explanation, they reveal that their wish is for the other to continue living and experiencing the world. Kaguya explains that this is why she initiated the Battle of Charm, while Yuzuru confesses that she accepted the challenge for the same reason. Each twin declares that the other is cuter and more deserving to be the true Yamai. With that, they warn Shido that if he doesn't choose, they'll blow up the whole island. With so much waiting on his mind, Shido shares everything with Toka that night, but to his dismay, Kaguya and Yuzuru end up overhearing everything. Pissed off, a fight begins between them. Elsewhere, Tobiichi wanders outside the hotel in search of Shido, but instead encounters a lone bandersnatch. Before she can react, Rin suddenly appears and questions why Tobiichi is outside. Distracted for a brief moment, Tobiichi is caught off guard as the robot lunges at both her and Rin. Meanwhile, aboard the Fraxinus, Kanazuki takes charge and deploys Eidfolium. In a bold move, he deactivates the airship's stealth mode, briefly revealing their presence to the Arbidol before the Fraxinus disappears again. Paddington, recognizing the airship as belonging to Ratatoskr, immediately commands his crew to prepare for an attack. Back on the island, Kaguya and Yuzuru's argument escalates as they confront each other over their mutual willingness to sacrifice themselves. Frustrated, they decide to settle the matter by resuming their original plan. A duel or the last one standing is the victor. As the two psych ward residents clash in a fierce battle, Shudo tries to stop them by telling them to stop for him. As the Arbitel aggressively attacks on the Fraxinus, Kanazuki begins to vibrate with pleasure. Seeing this, Shizaki frantically contacts Katori to ask her if Kanazuki has been touched by his uncle. Realizing something is wrong, Kotori asks what's wrong. Shizaki then informs her that the airship is under attack and that they may not be able to hold out much longer. Despite the urgency, Kotori remains calm and reassures Shizaki that she and the rest of the crew will be safe as long as they follow Kanazuki's instructions. On a ruby island, the fierce battle between the Yamai twins rages on. Watching from below, Shida wonders aloud why they are fighting despite their obvious love for each other. Suddenly, Toka warns Shido that she senses something nearby. As they peer into the forest, they notice lights shining from within and hear a familiar voice. The source of the voice is revealed to be Ellen, who steps out and explains that she had been waiting for an opportunity to confront Toka alone. However, Ellen is caught off guard upon discovering the twins, recognizing them as spirits, and addressing them by their codename, Berserk. Confused, Shido questions who Ellen is and asks if she is part of the ASD, but Ellen denies the allegations. She then gestures to the Bandersnatch units, ordering them to capture Toka. However, as soon as they lunge at her, Toka swiftly dispatches them with her angel, Sandolphin. Seeing Toka in her limited astral dress and wielding her angel, Ellen confidently confirms that Toka is indeed the spirit known as Princess, and calmly asks her to come with them. In response, Toka raises Sandolphin toward Ellen, but Shido quickly enters White Knight mode, urging Toka not to point her angel at an unarmed woman. Toka, however, remains firm, stating that she can sense something dangerous about Ellen. She explains that Ellen's aura feels similar to that of an AST member, but far more powerful and ominous. Just as Toka finishes speaking, Ellen swiftly equips her CR unit and prepares for battle. 
she orders the Bandersnatch units to stand down, stating that she wants to personally test if Toka is as powerful as rumored. Without hesitation, Toka charges at Ellen, Sandolphin in hand, ready to meet her head-on. Despite wriggling like a caterpillar in heat, Kenosuke proves himself as a good leader by successfully attacking the enemy while keeping the frax in a safe. Back on the battlefield, Toka and Ellen clash in a fierce duel. Ellen deflects one of Toka's attacks and tells her that she is a disappointment. To Toka's dismay, Ellen effortlessly breaks through her guard and shatters Sandolphin, leaving her momentarily stunned. Seizing the opportunity, Ellen lands another blow, knocking Toka down. Shido, filled with concern, calls out to Toka and rushes toward her, but is blocked by the Bandersnatch units. Ellen then orders them to subdue Toka and bring her to the Arbidal. Feeling like a Victorian girl suffering from disgusting food, Shido refuses to let this cycle of helplessness continue. He cries out Toka's name, his eyes changing as he raises his hand. To his astonishment, the Bandersnatch units are suddenly torn apart. Ellen, equally shocked, watches as Shido manifests Toka's angel, Sandolphin. On the other hand, Fraxinus and Arbatel continue to fight like a social media couple. Meanwhile, down below, a smirk plays on Ellen's lips as she tells Shido he's coming with her too. She orders the remaining Bandersnatch units to capture Shido, even if it means hurting him where the sun doesn't shine. As Shido struggles to defend himself, Toka watches helplessly, unable to intervene. Just then, the Arbital sustains more damage to its starboard side, causing a fire to break out in the control room. As a result, the Bandersnatch lose their power source and collapse before they can reach Shido. Ellen quickly requests a status report from the Arbital and learns that their airship is under attack. This momentary distraction gives Shido the chance to grab Toka and make a run for it. Ellen attempts to chase them but ends up falling into a hidden pit, with the Bandersnatch units run a train on her. Before losing consciousness, she wonders who set the trap. Of course, it was all I, Mei, and Mi's doing who are now asleep peacefully. With their control room ablaze and communication with Ellen cut off, the Arbital is forced to retreat. Meanwhile, Shido and Toka make their way to the beach, only to find that the twins are still locked in battle. Shido desperately calls out for them to stop, but his pleas go unheard. In an attempt to get their attention, Shido summons Sandolphin and begins waving it around. Unsure of what to do next, he turns to Toka for guidance. Toka reminds him that Sandolphin responds to the will of its user, and that his desire to protect her earlier had caused it to manifest. Feeling nervous, Shido hesitates, but Toka places her hand on Sandolphin alongside his, reassuring him. Encouraging him to concentrate on his wish, Toka instructs Shido to swing Sandolphin on the purpose, trusting that the sword will respond. Taking a deep breath, Shido channels his resolve, and with Toka's support, he swings Sandolphin down. The blade emits a powerful burst of energy, cutting through the storm created by the twins and clearing the center, finally capturing their attention. Wanting to resolve the issue, Shido tells them that he can seal their spirits so both of them can live. Initially, the twins are distrustful of Shido's words since he is a man after all but after envisioning a light for themselves, they decide to give it a try. However, suddenly, Arbatel looms over them with Paddington, determined to capture the twins and Toka. As the twins catch sight of the airship, Kaguya exchanges a glance with Yuzuru, both silently agreeing to bring it down together. They summon their respective angels and merge their powers, forming a bow and arrow. With perfect synchronization, the twins aim at the airship and destroy it completely. Afterward, the twins decide to repay Shido by kissing him. As expected, their astral dresses begin to fade as their spirit powers get sealed within Shido. Suddenly, Toka appears behind them and furiously demands to know what Shido is doing with the twins. Shido tries to explain, but the embarrassed twins respond by saying that Shido has pulled the classic friendly Uncle Steve on them, prompting Toka to scream Shido's name in outrage. At Raisin High, I'd May, and Mai announce that Shido will be this year's organizer for the Tendu Festival, much to his shock. When Toka asks Tanamachi about the festival, he explains that it's a citywide event involving 10 schools, with each school selecting one student to organize its activities. Later that day, Shido, overwhelmed by his new responsibilities, complains about the heavy workload. He expresses his gratitude to Yashino for helping him, to which she responds that it's no problem. Suddenly, the spacequake alarm blares, and Shido quickly contacts Katori. Acting swiftly, Katori informs him that Fraxinus will transport him to the location of the new spirit. 
As Shido arrives at the spirit's location, he is surprised to find the spirit performing and singing alone. Kotori confirms that the spirit Shido has encountered his diva, who had only appeared once before, six months ago. She warns Shido to be cautious, as they have no information on her powers. As Shido approaches Diva, he accidentally knocks over a can, alerting her. The spirit calls out, asking if anyone is there, but then invites him to come forward and talk. Kotori reassures Shido that she and her team will help him decide what to say and encourages him to reveal himself. As Diva looks around, Shido finally steps into view. The spirit initially appears pleased that someone has come forward, but falls silent when she realizes it's not Henry Cavill. Shido apologizes for intruding and tries to risk her up. Meanwhile, on Fraxinus, Diva's affection status begins to drop rapidly. Kotori advises Shido to try different things but in the end, Kotori reveals that Diva now thinks he is a curry muncher. Disgusted by Shido's compliment, Diva unleashes a powerful wave from her voice, knocking him back and almost off the edge of the high stage. Fortunately, Shido manages to cling on, but this upsets Diva, who is trying to build her street cred. She tells Shido to catapult himself like an angry bird. Just then, an explosion overhead interrupts their confrontation. Turns out, it's the AST arriving on the scene. When Diva sees the AST, her mood shifts, and she asks them to be her audience. Unfortunately, nobody's in the mood for a cheap Lady Gaga concert, so the AST starts attacking her. As the situation escalates, Fraxinus teleports Shido and his magic mic to safety while Diva deploys a force field and vanishes which visibly frustrates Ryuko over yet another failure. The next day, an exhausted Shido along with Tobichi and Toka attend the festival's meeting and learn that the girl holding the meeting is none other than Diva. Later on Fraxinus, Kotori informs Shido that the spirit's name is Miku Ezioi, a renowned singer known for holding exclusive concerts for her female fans. She also states that Miku harbors hatred for testosterone Terence and only loves women, of course, Henry Cavill being the only exception. Since Miku is allergic to men, Kotori sends Shido back to school, with all the things that'll help him become the best ladyboy Thailand has ever seen. After cross dressing, Shido meets up with Ai, Mei, and Mi, and introduces herself as Shido's cousin, who is named Shaori Atsuka. Toka suddenly appears, and as she is about to reveal Shido's identity, he quickly intervenes, asking her to conceal his identity and pretend he's a girl. Toka agrees and greets Miku as Shiori. While Tobichi snaps his pictures, much to Shido's embarrassment. Later, Shiori arrives at Tenga Square, where Kotori informs her that Rinduji Academy will be setting up at Hall 1, where Miku will be. Shiori spots Miku walking with her classmates and approaches her. Miku notices Shiori and asks her name. Shiori almost slips up with male pronouns but recovers, making Miku remark that Shiori is a funny girl. On Fraxinus, the crew observes Miku's mood stabilizing and urge Shido to act more zesty with Miku. And so reluctantly, Shido as Shiori asks Miku if she'd sell her panties. Initially surprised, Miku tells Shiori that in return she wants her. This flusters Shiori, but Miku quickly reassures her that she was just kidding. Miku then notices Shiori's uniform and inquires if she's from Raisin High. Shiori confirms and introduces herself and Miku reciprocates. With Miku's mood positively stable, Kotori advises Shiori to ask Miku a few questions. Shaori inquires why Miku is on the stage when it's off limits. Miku explains her love for performing and her desire for people to hear her sing. Miku then asks if Shiori has heard of her, confusing Shiori. Miku apologizes for the confusion and asks Shiori to keep their stage encounter a secret. As they're about to leave, Shiori ends up tripping which prompts Miku to hand her a handkerchief for her bruise. Later that night, Shido realizes why women launched a movement called Free the Nipple and expresses relief over being a man. The next day, Shido returns to Rinduji Academy as Shidori and gets invited by Miku for tea. After several cups of tea, Miku tells Shidori she fancies her and asks her to transfer to Rinduji. When Shidori rejects Miku's request, the spirit tries to use her voice to control her mind. But since Shidori is no ordinary human, the voice manipulation doesn't work on her, which prompts Miku to ask her if she's really a human being. Since lying could be risky, Shidori tells Miku she's a human who can seal spirits. With that, Shidori asks the spirit to let her seal her powers so she no longer causes spacequakes. Hearing this, Miku coldly reveals she doesn't mind causing spacequakes, which upsets Shidori so much that she expresses her disgust for her. 
arrogant as ever. Miku tells Shidori that if Rei's in high places first in the singing competition, then she will let her seal their powers but if not then, she will take all her spirits. This pisses off Shidori, who knows she will lose a singing competition against Miku, who is a professional singer. Takamiya wakes up from her coma, surprised to find herself alive despite having been shot multiple times by Kurumi a month ago. As she sits up and removes the drip from her arm, the door opens, and several people in black suits enter. They ask her to confirm if she is Mana Takamita, to which she responds by questioning their identity. Moments later, a nurse enters the room, having noticed irregularities on Takamiya's electrocardiogram, but till then Takamiya had vanished like your dad. In the music room, Shido Toka and Tobiichi join I, Mei, and Mi's band after learning that they are losing members due to A's selfishness. I ask Shido what instrument he can play, and he responds that he can play guitar. I quickly decides that she will be the bassist, Mei the drummer, and Mi the keyboardist. Since Toka wanted to either get played like a drum or play the drum, she expresses her disappointment over the matter. Shido then convinces her to try another instrument, and so in the end, Toka resorts to playing a tambourine. Tobichi, having a good voice, ends up as a vocalist. Later in the AST's hangar room, Tobichi notices something off about the other members, who aren't acting as they usually do. Suspicious, she grabs Mildred by the neck and drags her outside where she demands to know why everyone is behaving like an Ohio resident. At first, Mildred tries to deny but soon she caves and is about to fill Tobichi in when Jessica, a new member of the AST, interrupts them. Frustrated, Tobiichi enters the changing room where she meets up with Ryuko, who pretends to not notice Tobiichi, and blurts out the secret mission, which involves the capture of Toka and Shido. The next day at the festival, Shido transforms into Shidori, but wears a maid outfit since their class is doing a maid cafe. Just then, Miku walks over to her and demands a date. At first, the date goes on smoothly until Miku uses her power to get the prize without actually winning. This upsets Shidori, who confronts Miku, but the spirit casually tells her that humans are her playthings. Now furious, Shidori tells Miku that she will beat her in the competition to which the spirit states that she would like to see her try and walks away. Shido initially didn't grasp the full meaning of Miku's words, but he finally understands when he discovers that I, Mei, and Mi have been brainwashed by Miku, preventing them from attending their performance. With their vocalist, Tobiichi, also missing, they are unable to perform until Kotori decides that Shido will need to lip-sync while she arranges for replacements. Shido and Toka head to the opposite side of the stage to watch Miku's performance. She begins with her first song, accompanied by back dancers, leaving Shido and Toka in awe of her powerful performance. As Miku prepares to start her second song, the stage suddenly goes dark, part of Kotori's plan to lower the hype and delay the performance. Unexpectedly, Miku manifests her astral dress before the entire audience and launches into her second song. After Miku's performance ends, Toka is amazed, while Shido is concerned about how they can compete with her. Moments later, the Yamai sisters arrive at the back and offer to be last-minute replacements for the performance. Meanwhile, Tobiichi dons the white licorice and is busy battling Dem transfers to stop them from going after Shido and Toka. During the fight, Tobiichi quickly overpowers Jessica and her associates which prompts her to seek backup but Ryuko cuts the call reminding her that she was told by them to not fight. Back at the concert venue, Shido finds out the lip-sync system isn't working, causing him to lose hope. Just then, Toka starts singing solo, reviving the band's energy and getting everyone back into the groove. They finish the song with a triumphant high five. While Shido and his gang have a jolly good time, Tobichi is shown with blood running down her face, signaling that she's pushed herself to the limit using the experimental CR unit. As the 25th annual Tenu Festival stage performance results are announced, Tobichi continues to battle the Dem Wizards outside Tengu Square using the white licorice. Inside, the results reveal that Raisin High School, where Shido, Toka, and the Amai sisters are affiliated, takes second place in the stage portion. First place goes to Induji Girls Academy, where Miku is a student, thanks to her powerful performance. Following this, the total results from the first day are revealed. Miku taunts Shiori, claiming she lost because she relied too much on her friends, and arrogantly declares that she now owns Shiori and the five other spirits she has sealed. However, before Miku can continue, the announcement is made that Raisin High School has taken first place overall for the day. This surprising comeback victory is due to their maid cafe receiving the highest number of votes in the food booth portion of the festival. 
Frustrated and unable to accept her loss, Miku summons her angel Gabriel, unleashing a powerful sound wave that hypnotizes everyone who hears it. As Miku has Shiori restrained by her hypnotized minions, she begins to feel something off. Growing suspicious, she orders her followers to remove Shiori's underwear, discovering Mini Shido and his scared nuts. Enraged by the deception, Miku commands the hypnotized crowd to attack Shido. Desperate to get away, Shido tries to escape, but he's quickly confronted by Yoshino and the Yamai sisters, who, under Miku's control, summon their angels to attack him. Just as Shido is about to be overwhelmed, Toka, unaffected by the hypnosis due to wearing in-ear monitors, arrives in time to save him. While Shido tries to contact Kotori to arrange an extraction via Fraxinus, Kotori herself falls under Miku's hypnotic influence and prepares to fire the missile cannon at Tenga Square. Fortunately, Takamiya steps in just in time, subduing Kotori before the command to fire can be issued. Above Tenga Square, Tobiichi is locked in battle with Jessica and her Dem squad. As her energy reaches its limit and she's on the verge of defeat, Fraxinus fires Mistletane, targeting the Bandersnatch and DM Wizards, allowing Takamiya to rescue Origami. Takamiya then destroys Jessica's armaments, forcing the Dem forces to retreat. Back on the ground, Toka continues protecting Shido while fighting off Miku and the hypnotized spirits. Ellen suddenly appears, intent on capturing both Toka and Shido. In a desperate move, Toka throws Shido to safety, but without access to her full powers due to being sealed, she's easily subdued by Ellen and gets captured. Shido, devastated by the loss of Toka and Miku's control over the city, is left with no choice but to retreat. While hiding from the hypnotized mob, he falls into despair, unsure of how to rescue Toka. At that moment, Kurumi appears, her trademark giggle filling the air as she remarks on how events have unfolded in an unexpected way. Pushed to his limits, Shido begs Kurumi for help in saving Toka. Since Kurumi is a menace to society, she becomes excited and agrees to help. Elsewhere, Toka wakes up in an isolation room within one of Dem's buildings. Ellen is there to greet her, restraining Toka's every attempt to escape with her territory. Ellen coldly informs Toka that she will now be interrogated, leaving Toka trapped and powerless. Kurumi and Shido arrive at Miku's house, with Shido anxiously urging the Gothic princess that they need to rescue Toka as quickly as possible. Kurumi, however, insists that they first have to deal with Miku. She then finds a photo and an old music album belonging to Miku, featuring her original stage name before she became a spirit. Using her tenth bullet, Yud, Kurumi peers into Miku's past to understand her better, hoping to find a way to influence her. Meanwhile, at Tengu Square, Miku is impatiently questioning Ai, Mei, and Mi about Shido's location. Although they inform her that several people have spotted him, they still haven't pinpointed his exact whereabouts. Growing more frustrated, Miku focuses her efforts on finding him so she can make him walk over a field of Legos. As Kurumi and Shido make a bold appearance at Tengu Square, Kurumi casually tells Shido that the simplest way to resolve the situation is to persuade Miku to stop her pursuit of him. Despite Shido's doubts about how that could work, Kurumi remains confident in her plan. Meanwhile, Miku, monitoring the square through her surveillance cameras, notices Shido's arrival. Smirking, she declares that she already knows his true name and identity, convinced that she holds the upper hand. As Miku orders her lobotomized pets to capture Shido, Kurumi laughs like Michael Jackson before activating her City of Devouring Time to incapacitate the civilians. Shido and Kurumi now make their way towards the center of the stage. Shido calls out to Miku, telling her that he wants to talk about Toka. However, Miku, still bitter and enraged, refuses to listen and uses her Angel March to further empower the hypnotized crowd. Kurumi quickly responds by summoning the hands of her clones to hold back the crowd and keep them from advancing. Moments later, Yashino and the Yamai twins, still under Miku's control, summon their angels and begin attacking. Kurumi, unfazed, summons more of her clones to counter their attacks, creating a chaotic clash on the stage. In the midst of the battle, Kurumi seizes an opportunity. She shoots Shido with her first bullet, Aleph, accelerating his movement toward Miku. Before Miku can react, Kurumi pulls both Shido and Miku into her shadow, isolating them from the chaos outside. Inside the Shadow Realm, the noise of the battle vanishes, leaving Shido and Miku alone for a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Now that they're face-to-face -face with no distractions, 
Shido realizes this might be his only chance to get through to Miku and convince her to stop mimicking the footsteps of Queen Elizabeth. He tries to bring her attention towards Toka, informing Miku about how DDM wizards have captured her, but Miku interjects. She tells Shido that he should find another chocolate starfish to stuff his balony pony, but Shido insists that Toka isn't an object to him. Unable to believe this, Miku asks Shido if he would save Toka, even if it costs his love. Shido confidently asserts that Toka is more valuable to him, and begs her to not cause any damage while he goes to save Toka. Not buying Shido's act, Miku tells him that he's not a certified lover boy, but a PDF file. Just as Shido is about to speak to Miku, Kurumi suddenly pulls both of them back into the real world. She calmly informs him that their time is up, prompting Shido to apologize to Kurumi for wasting such an opportunity since he didn't get Miku to help Toka. Not giving a flying fudge about Miku, Kurumi forces Shido to pet her and then reveals Toka's location to him. At the DM building, Toka finds herself face to face with both Ellen and Westcott. Westcott, clearly displeased, complains to Ellen about how Toka sees him the way Sakura saw Naruto in the first few episodes. He then turns his attention to Toka, revealing his twisted plan to use her spirit powers to append the world. Observing that Toka's current emotional state is stable, Westcott declares that they need to push her into despair in order to achieve their goals. He goes on to list various forms of torture, each more chilling than the last, before making a final ominous remark about harming those she cares about. This immediately shifts Toka's concern to Shido. Ellen, noticing Toka's reaction, confirms to Westcott that Shido is likely on her mind. In response, Westcott coldly states that they must now prepare for Shido's arrival. As Shido and Kurumi arrive at the location, Kurumi employs her clones to fight the Bandersnatch units and wizards sent after them. After heading towards the main entrance, Kurumi's head suddenly gets blown away. Takamiya reveals herself and informs Shido that she's now working with Kotori. As Kurumi returns, Takamiya prepares to fight but Kurumi tells Shido and Takamiya that she's off to take care of her own matters. Once Kurumi leaves, Takamiya hands Shido an earpiece which connects him to Kotori, who is no longer under Miku's influence. Kotori tries to stop Shido from walking into a death trap, but Shido firmly states he can't leave Toka alone. Left with no options, Kotori agrees to back him up. Proceeding on, Shido and Takamiya encounter Jessica, who has equipped herself with Scarlet Lycoris. Seeing Takamiya, Jessica becomes mad with vengeance, and Takamiya informs Shido they used to work together. While the girls have a catfight, Shido ventures deeper into the building and is eventually caught by the wizards. In an act of desperation, Shido summons Sandolphin and breaks free, ready to rescue Toka. Ryuko and her AST squad arrive at the Didam Japanese headquarters, only to find a group of Bandersnatch units locked in battle with several of Kurumi's clones. Meanwhile, inside the headquarters, Shido presses forward in his mission to save Toka, defeating a number of Didam wizards as he advances. However, his progress is halted when he is stopped by another group of wizards, who use their territory to pin him to the ground. Just as Shido seems trapped, Miku suddenly appears and uses her angel to rescue him. Seeing Miku in action, lobotomized Yoshino and Yamai twins ask her how they can be of service. Miku then commands them to remain outside and hold off the remaining DM troops, while she and Shido press on to find Toka. As they move forward, Shido asks if Miku is helping him because of the promise they made earlier. However, Miku sharply denies this, shouting that it's not the reason she's there. Outside, Takamiya faces an increasingly unstable Jessica and endures a brutal attack in the process. To her misfortune, Ellen joins forces with Jessica against her. Just when the threesome proves too much to Takamiya's petted body, Tobiichi arrives and shields her from further harm. After asking Takamiya about Shido's whereabouts, Tobiichi quickly shifts her focus to the Dem headquarters, but is stopped by Ellen before she can proceed. Meanwhile, inside the Dem headquarters, Miku manipulates one of the wizards into revealing Toka's location. She learns that Toka is being held on the 18th floor, and the wizard hands her an ID card to access the area when they arrive. As Miku and Shido continue on their way, they encounter another group of Dem troops. Miku uses her spirit power to fend them off, unaware that two others are approaching from behind. Shido steps in, eliminating the two with Sandolphin's power. However, by the end of his battle, Shido ends up feeling like Nicole Kidman during her marriage with Tom Cruise. As Shido pushes himself forward despite his exhaustion, 
Miku chastises him, urging him to give in to his fatigue. She cockily tells him to abandon his heroic efforts, suggesting that if he gives up now, they can escape without risking their lives. Frustrated, Shido snaps, telling her to shut up, insisting that no one could ever replace Toka. His words leave Miku momentarily speechless. Regaining her composure, Miku counters, saying that Shido's determination to save Toka is nothing more than a pointless act. When Shido asks why she despises people so much, Miku angrily declares that humans are nothing more than toys for her amusement, men are her slaves, and women are her playthings, and that's all they are worth. Unfazed, Shido presses on, reminding her that she was once human too, just like him, before Phantom turned her into a spirit. Surprised by his insight, Miku asks how he knew, to which Shido responds that an accomplice, referring to Kurumi, had informed him during their time at Miku's mansion. Furious, Miku retorts that Shido knows nothing about her. Shido agrees, but insists that he could understand her better if she would just open up and talk to him. Reluctantly, Miku begins to share her past. She explains that when she was still human, she was happy in her career as an idol. Her first album had just been released, and her manager had arranged a meeting with a producer who offered her a chance to appear on television. Of course, the deal involved with Miku getting under him. When Miku rejected the offer, the producer retaliated by fabricating a scandal, and to her dismay, not a single person, including her fans, came to her defense. Desperate to prove herself, Miku tried to perform at a concert but lost her voice under the immense pressure. Shido consoles her, but Miku angrily snaps back, accusing him of being just like the others. Shido calmly counters, telling her that she let her fear and anger toward people take control of her. Before Miku can respond, a group of Dem soldiers appears, but Miku's frustration boils over, and when she yells at Shido to shut up, the sheer force of her shout knocks the soldiers unconscious. She tells Shido that she's never going to seal her powers as nobody would listen to her without her hypnotic voice. Hearing this, Shido yells at her that he would listen to her. Of course, Miku refrains from budging. In the meantime, Tobiichi and Ellen continue their battle. Ellen makes it her personal mission to eliminate Tobiichi, but before she could do so, Westcott summons her causing her to retreat. As Shido and Miku find Toka, Westcott arrived and applauds Shido when suddenly, Ellen arrives and plunges a sword deep into Shido's guts. Seeing Shido in a dire state, the despair deep within Toka reaches its peak, triggering her to inverse. Westcott laughs with excitement as darkness takes over. He then announces the arrival of the Demon King. After regaining consciousness, Shido finds a dark energy swirling around Toka, who now appears to be a proper goth mommy. Seeing how Toka has changed along with her angel, Shido tries to get her attention, but he notices a complete shift in her demeanor. The bubbly spirit is now gone and in her place is an emotionless, confused spirit who demands to know her whereabouts. In the meantime, West Cost, enjoying the show, orders Ellen to slay Toka. Elsewhere, Crazy Jessica mindlessly attacks Takamiya. Despite being overwhelmed, Jessica expresses her strong hate for Takamiya by saying Westcott should have never chosen a monkey like her to be adeptus too. Despite feeling sorry for Jessica, Takamiya finally inserts a sword inside her abdomen, defeating her. As Jessica succumbs to her wounds, Takamiya tells her a comforting lie, saying that Westcott is proud of her allowing Jessica to pass away with a sense of peace. Meanwhile, back in the dim headquarters, Toka and Ellen are locked in a vicious duel. Toka narrowly dodges Ellen's latest attack, leading Ellen to summon Rongomiant to finish Toka off. As Ellen believes she's won, Shudo calls out Toka's name in desperation. To Ellen's shock, Toka survives the blow and in response, unleashes her demon king, Nahima. Ellen charges at her again, but this time Toka effortlessly blocks the attack with just her hand. Spotting Westcott, Toka directs her fury toward him and launches an attack. Ellen, realizing the threat, rushes to protect Westcott, taking the brunt of the blow herself. Miku quickly shields both herself and Shido from Mahima's devastating blast. As the dust settles, Ellen emerges, having successfully protected Westcott in time. Westcott, still relishing the chaos, asks Ellen what she now thinks of Toka. Ellen acknowledges Toka's newfound strength, noting that she has become far more powerful than before. Westcott, satisfied with the outcome, suggests that they retreat for now. As he bids farewell to Shido and Miku, Westcott ominously suggests they meet again if they manage to survive. Strangely, he addresses Shido as Takamiya, before quickly correcting himself to Itsuka, causing Shido to question if Westcott knows his true identity. 
Westcott, however, denies knowing anything, leaving Shido and Miku to face inverse Toka. Toka immediately launches an attack on the two of them. Just as the devastating blow is about to land, Sandolphin is summoned, shielding both Shido and Miku. At this moment, Kotori contacts Shido, urgently asking what is happening. Shido explains the situation, asking whether it's possible to seal Toka. Rin expresses doubts, explaining that in her current inverse state, Toka's mind may be too unstable for sealing. Kotori agrees, advising Shido to try his best to make Toka remember who he is and to proceed cautiously. Shido attempts to reach out to Toka, trying to remind her of their connection, but before he can get through to her, she blasts him away with Nahama, showing no signs of recognition. Miku, determined to help, uses her angel to restrain Toka, giving Shido the chance to get close. However, Toka breaks free, causing Miku to lose her voice temporarily. Inverse Toka then turns her fury on Miku, but just before the attack lands, Shido manifests Yoshino's angel, Zadkiel, creating an ice barrier that shields both him and Miku. Surprised that Shido protected her and kept his promise, Miku begins to change her opinion of him. When Miku calls out Shido's name, Inverse Toka experiences a brief pain in her head but quickly suppresses it by injuring herself with her Demon King powers. Determined to finish Shido once and for all, Inverse Toka summons the final form of her Demon King, Haverslev. Miku, unable to use her powers to stop Toka, decides to protect Shido herself. However, just before Toka can unleash Haverslev's devastating power, she is momentarily distracted by Yoshino, who has regained her freedom from Miku's control. Unfortunately, Yoshino is swiftly blown away by Toka's power. Shido, resolute in his mission, assures Miku that he will save Toka, reminding her that he always keeps his promises. He then turns to face inverse Toka, calling out her name. This catches her attention, and she momentarily feels a strange emotion but quickly dismisses it. She proceeds to unleash Paverslo's immense power towards Shido, resulting in massive destruction where the attack lands. Miku, witnessing the devastation, falls to her knees in despair, believing that Toka has finally rid herself of Shido. However, much to Toka's surprise, Shido emerges alive, having been saved by the timely intervention of the Yamai sisters. Grateful for their help, Shido expresses his thanks to the sisters. As he descends toward Toka, she suddenly experiences a flashback of Shido calling her name, a memory stirring deep within her. Confused and unsure of her feelings, she watches as Shido floats in front of her and then kisses her. As Cottage Core Toka returns, Miku realizes Shido really is a man of his words. This prompts her to make Shido an exception, so the next day, Miku places a kiss on Shido's lips and calls him darling. Just then Toka walks in and angrily tells Miku that it's time for her concert. While Miku graces the stage, Shido and his roster watch from the backstage, totally in awe of Miku's voice. In the end, Miku publicly thanks Shido by calling him darling, igniting jealousy in the rest of the spirits. Shido sighs as he realizes more women mean more headache. Who do you think is Shido's favorite spirit? Let us know by commenting, pineapple juice, and if you like anime recaps, then watch this video.